Yeah, 15 at right. least. So let's go ahead and get started. And Dr. Ewinger, I'm going to have uh, you just check for the attendees and see if anybody has any questions or anything. Uh, first, I want to welcome everybody to the Department of Health and Exercise Science. Uh, the major you're choosing here is a Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science. Uh, two years ago, this program was a Bachelor of Science in what we called human performance in clinical settings. Uh, in the fall of 2019, we changed the name to Exercise Science just to make it easier for people to understand. My name is Dr. Byron, and you can see that my email address is right down here, simply my last name, Byron at Rowan.edu. I'm here with Dr. Uyghur. Uh, Dr. Uyghur, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Dr. Uyghur. Uh, my email is my last name, I'm the initial of my first name, M uh, at Rowan.edu. And are we recording this session? We are recorded. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so just a couple of things. Uh, if you look towards the bottom of the screen, you see uh, Mrs. Dowd. Uh, her email address is dowd at rowan.edu. And she is the, um, the advisor for all students in exercise science. So when you come to Rowan, uh, you'll have your professors, but you'll have one person who's specifically there as your advisor to make sure that you're taking the right classes. Uh, if you speak with your professors, your professors will be able to give you ideas about careers and choices for courses and those types of things. But the advisor is there to make sure you stay on track with all of your courses. So you'll get to know Mrs. Dowd, a uh, great person. She's a runner. Uh, myself I uh, and Dr. Uyghur, uh both love sports. So if you all are into sports and exercise, you're going to love this major. So this is a, some photos of just a few of our students participating in some of the labs, and we're going to go through that. I want to point out at the very bottom of the screen is our, our web page to the Health and Exercise Science Department. I would encourage everyone to go on that. Um, and if you uh, do undergraduate programs, and then look for the Bachelor of Science and Exercise Science. You can read through uh, some of the details about the program. There's a lot of information on there. At any time, if you have a question or a comment, you can use the chat box and Dr. Uyghur will keep his eye on that. If he sees somebody has a question or a comment, uh, we'll stop and uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, otherwise, we're just gonna kind of keep going. I'm gonna start off by talking about our program and then Dr. Uyghur uh, will finish up. Right, just got to get this panel going here. Okay, so the first thing uh, that I like to do, and if we were face to face, I would ask everybody, but it's a little bit tricky this way, is we want to certainly understand what you all are interested in doing career wise. We recognize a lot of people choose this major. Uh, if you want to go to physical therapy school, occupational therapy, physician assistant, med school, chiropractic school, accelerated nursing program. So a lot of fields in the healthcare industry. But the field of exercise science has specific careers as well. So if you plan to go to graduate school in one of those fields, that's great. This is a perfect major to choose because a lot of the courses are going to be very similar to what you'll have in those healthcare fields. But for many of you, you don't you're not interested in going to PT or OT school and you just want to get a degree in exercise science and do these following careers. So mostly what we prepare students for is what is called a clinical exercise physiologist. And exercise physiologists are healthcare professionals that work in hospitals, they work in medical-based fitness centers, they work in cardiac rehabilitation programs, they work with patients and clients that have diabetes or obesity weight management issues. We have some people that use exercise as a, as a mechanism to stay strong uh, during cancer or recovery from cancer. So uh, one area you can uh, go into, one career you can go into uh, with this degree is clinical exercise physiology. And it, exp it, it, it goes beyond these areas here, but those are just some of the more, more common areas that our students are going into. This is taking a minute for the slide to come up. Another area that our students go into is what is called corporate fitness. And corporate fitness is a field where large corporations, so corporations in, in Philadelphia, New York, all the big cities across the country, where they may employ thousands of uh, employees uh, and keeping them healthy is very important 
for them financially because as long as people are healthy, they're not missing work, they're more productive, and they don't cost the company as much in terms of health care and health insurance. So we have students that work in large corporations to design uh, fitness programs for the employees and their families to do screening, nutritional counseling, uh, blood pressure checks, cholesterol checks. And their goal really is to help reduce the cost for healthcare for their uh, in, for the company. Um, and they get an opportunity to work for, with a variety of individuals designing exercise programs, lifestyle modifications and nutritional programs. So we have students that go into that career as well. I would say probably over the last five years, a lot of our students are really interested in going into strength and conditioning. Probably 15 years ago, strength and conditioning was valuable mostly at the professional level and certainly at Division I college. But we're starting to see more and more strength and conditioning programs, even at the high school level and working with kids. So we have a lot of uh, students that are interested in, in um, getting an education and career path in strength and conditioning. We have several of our students that have already graduated that have already opened up their own facilities. So most people start off and they're working with somebody else in their strength and conditioning program. And then they usually break off and, and develop their own strength and conditioning program. So um, that's another area that a lot of our students will go into. You'll notice that if you pay attention to the health of this country, the fastest growing rate for type two diabetes and obesity is our kids. So we need to really begin to design youth fitness programs that are fun, that are engaging, and that integrate things such as strength training and not just think that weightlifting is just for adults. Um, so there's a lot of our students that go on to open up their own um, programs in youth fitness. Some individuals work at YMCA's and developing youth programs. So that's another area. But what we do find is that the majority of students that at least come into our program are actually interested in going into a healthcare field such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician assistant, accelerated nursing programs, medical school, chiropractic school. Um, and a lot of students come in, they may have hurt themselves and gone to physical therapy, and so they thought that would be a great career. But as they go through our program, they start to learn more about what occupational therapists do, um, learn more about physician assistants in some other areas. So if you're interested in one of these healthcare fields, the way that it goes is you first need a four-year undergraduate degree. And you technically could have an undergraduate degree in anything. Um, and still get accepted into one of these healthcare graduate programs. However, we specifically designed our program, and you'll see the courses that we have that will help you when you get into one of these graduate level fields. Um, just so you know, if physical therapy is what you're interested in, you do four year undergraduate degree, and then you apply to physical therapy school. If you get accepted, it's another three years. So it's a lot of schooling. Occupational therapy is an additional two years. Physician assistant, I think, is like an additional two and a half years. Accelerated nursing school programs are actually a uh, like an 18 month type of program after your undergraduate degree. And then, of course, med school is, is four years. So if you're interested in these healthcare fields, um, this is a perfect degree to choose because a lot of the courses that you're going to take, you're actually going to take when you go to PT school. So you're going to have sort of an edge on many people that chose a different degree. I'm just going to let Dr. Uyghur, uh speak for a second because he has a lot of students that go on to PT school and OT school and they he gets emails all the time telling uh, him how prepared they are. So if you could just speak for a minute on that. So later on, I'm going to explain how uh, we, we enroll our students in our research program, and the, usually they are one of the better students, and they are all usually ending up going to the best physical therapy schools. So I'm in communication with all my previous students uh, that who worked in my lab, and uh, along with other students as well. So all I hear about their training in their physical therapy programs is that. Uh, whenever there's a course that is relevant to what they already took in at Roman University, like motor control, biomechanics, and any, any kinesiology courses like that, they keep telling me that they didn't have to even work hard to get an A because of the training that they already got in at Roman. So I can clearly say that our curriculum is very much relevant, the most relevant curriculum 
among any department and uh, that relates to these uh, graduate level degrees that physical therapy, occupational therapy, and along with the research options that we provide, they're very relevant to these programs. Okay, so we're gonna go on here. So um, this is a listing of just some of the internships that um, some of our students are, uh, well, actually they were at until the uh, Corona thing came about. But you can see uh, we've got physical therapy companies, occupational therapy, physician assistant, strength and conditioning, cardiac rehab. So at the very end of your education, your fourth year, the last thing you do is an internship specifically at the type of facility that you would like in a career. And that's going to give you the hands on experience that you need. Uh, for those of you that are interested in OT or PT or physician assistant, you, you have to do a certain number of hours at a site, either volunteered or paid before you can apply. So you'll have that accomplished through our program. Um, so these are just a few of the uh, sites. And the one thing that is really neat is that we have specific places for you to do your internship, but you can do your internship anywhere in the world. In fact, just last year, we had a, a guy who wanted to do his uh, internship with, in Samoa. So he um, went to Samoa and, and became a part of their rugby association and he became their strength and conditioning coach. So don't feel like internships have to be where you live or even near Rowan. They can be anywhere in the world and we support you and help you to find an internship that's going to be successful. We had another student uh, just got back from his internship out in Arizona, worked with some professional athletes out there. Um, so the internship is a really exciting opportunity to to apply what you've learned uh, in, your, in your education. These are some of the major courses and I point these out to you um, so that you can see how relevant they are to healthcare fields for those of you that are interested in PT and OT and physician assistant. So uh, anatomy and physiology one and two is really the basis for everything that you do. You're gonna take anatomy and physiology one your first semester here and anatomy and physiology two your second semester. If you're a transfer student, you probably have already taken those courses, but if not, you're going to take those right away and they serve as the basis for everything you're going to learn from then on. So it's really important in anatomy and physiology one and two that you try not to memorize, but rather learn the information so you can retain it because then you're going to take courses like motor control and learning, which is looking at how the nervous system controls movement. Uh, Dr. Yeager looks a lot at neuromuscular diseases and, and how do how they how they occur, how they affect the individual, and then how do we treat that uh, with exercise? You have two biomechanics labs, which is really the physics of human movement. So if you've had any physics classes uh, in high school, um, that will help you with these classes. If you didn't, that's not not a problem. Um, but really looks at the physics behind movement exercise physiology with lab and exercise physiology is not just how many sets or how many reps do you do when you're weightlifting it's looking at the cell level and what is happening in the muscle cell or the or the heart cell uh, during exercise and how can exercise be used not just to enhance performance but reduce the risk of of uh, injuries or diseases and then just to go over a few more, more human disease and epidemiology, exercise prescription, exercise for special populations. Those special populations are mostly cardi cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, di um, diabetes, I think I said, uh, and aging and neuromuscular diseases as well. You have a course uh, called EKG interpretation. So we're gonna teach you how to read EKGs, which is, believe it or not, a lot easier than you think it is. Um, and we. We also teach you about pharmacology. Whatever field you go into, you're gonna have patients and you're gonna have clients that are on medications and you need to understand the interaction between exercise and those medications. Um, and then you have some other courses, two, two level nutrition classes, a research class, because um, for our program, it's important that you understand how to read research. But if you're gonna to go to graduate school, you're going to do research. So we want you involved in that. And then we have a few other uh, courses that really help you out throughout your career. Again, just so everybody knows, um, if you have a question or a comment, just enter it into the chat box and Dr. Yuiger will let us know. Um, I put this up here just real quick, but you can get to this uh, at our webpage. 
this is kind of the breakdown of what you would take your freshman year and then your sophomore year, if you were coming in as a freshman, if you're transferring in, then you've probably covered the majority of these classes. Mrs. Dow will be able to work with you to say which ones will transfer over, which ones may not transfer over and get you right into a program so we can get you graduated within the time frame that, that most people expect. Um, so you can see just a couple of things, anatomy and physiology one and two, those are gonna be the most important classes you take right off the bat. Everybody in, in the entire campus takes college composition. Uh, most everybody takes psychology, and you need that for graduate school for those who are going to go. You'll take um, two levels of biology, which everyone would need for graduate school, and it's important for our career. Um, and then the only class that's really in our major is Foundations of Exercise Science. And in this class, we help you to begin the process of developing a resume and developing uh, your ideas about what you want to do specifically for your career. When we come down into the second year, uh, you can see safety, first aid, athletic injuries. You're getting bio, uh, public speaking, chemistry. Those are just requirements you have to take. You get a nutrition. And then probably the motor control and learning is your first real class where you're really looking at um, the, the human body and how it relates to exercise science. Then we come into your junior year, and this is where you really hit your hardcore classes. So for those of you that are transferring in, you're probably going to start right up in this junior year. So in the fall, you'll really get going. And so I'm not going to read through each course, but you can see the courses that you'll be taking. And you can see down here your senior year, second semester, mostly what you're doing is just your internship. So I just want to point that out to you. And you can get to this guide by going to our website. Um, I also want to introduce you to the faculty. It's really important that you know the backgrounds of the people that are teaching you. We're not just having individuals teach you uh, information. We're having experts that have worked in the field um, and that have degrees that are related to what they're teaching. So you can see uh, many of us are exercise physiologists, biomechanists. Me uh, we have several physical therapists that teach for us. Actually, all three of these physical therapists that teach for us also own their own physical therapy company. So a lot of our students do their internship there and they do some, some site visits there. We actually have a couple of chiropractors, several registered dietitians, a sports psychologist, so a lot of people involved in strength and conditioning. So we just want you to uh, know and to be excited that you're gonna be taught by really experts in the field. Um, we also want to encourage you um, when you're in school, not just to get your uh, your degree in exercise science, but to look at minors or look at what is called a CUG. A CUG is a certificate of undergraduate uh, um, studies. And the CUGs that we offer that we really encourage our students to do, and there's room to fit into your, um, your coursework because you have some free electives where you could take whatever classes you want. We have a CUG, which is called psychology of sport and exercise and we also have a minor in that as well um, for those of you that are interested in occupational therapy and nursing that is very important because occupational therapy really wants you to have a good psychology background for those of you that are interested in maybe owning your own business or opening up your own business or maybe even managing a, a physical therapy center or a strength and conditioning program we have a sport management cug we have an adventure leadership cug we also encourage students to get a minor in psychology, computer science, and definitely speaking a second language is, is a benefit. So uh, you wanna get as much as you can out of your degree. So um, not just taking the classes that are in, in that program, but look at for other things that you can get. And then of course, we want you to get involved as much as you can. So we have multiple clubs on campus that are within our degree. The primary club that's for exercise science is a club called Exercises Medicine. These photos that you're seeing are from events that our students have put together on campus and at other sites um, where they're helping people to appreciate the importance of exercise truly as medicine. We have a strength and conditioning program at Rowan. We have a nutrition performance program at Rowan. And then we have several other clubs um, that are within our our department as well. So we encourage you to get involved. Everyone in this major should be in the Exercises Medicine Club. So we have a couple questions, Dr. Yeah. Brown. Uh, Michael is asking, what's the difference between exercise science and athletic training programs? Right. 
And it's actually, uh, Michael, there, that's a great question. And there is a big difference. Athletic trainers are specifically going to do what you think of. Uh, they're going to work with athletes um, who have been specifically injured. Um, they're healthcare professionals who, who um, are able to treat um, athletic injuries. There are some athletic trainers that do work in orthopedic centers as well, but mostly you'll see them at the high school level and at the college level. Exercise science is uh, a little bit more broad, whereas athletic training is very specific. Um, exercise science is more broad. So you, um, when you are in exercise science, you can go into fields such as cardiac rehabilitation, strength and conditioning. So they are both in our major. And if you get into the major and you start to realize athletic training is more of what you're interested in, um, then you can certainly move over to that. Uh, but mostly, really, um, I would say the difference is exercise science looks at the preventative side of exercise, whereas athletic training looks more into the rehabilitative side. Our goal is really to prevent these injuries from happening, prevent these diseases from happening. And then if they do happen, we can be a part of the rehabilitation process. Athletic trainers may do a little bit of the preventative stuff, too, but they're mostly there in terms of, of rehabbing the injury. Um, and also, Dr. Sterner is the chair for the um, uh, athletic training program, so I can get you his number if you have more specific questions on athletic training. Did you say you had a few more questions? The second question, is there something like exercise science is a minor? Uh, that's a great question, and I really wish we could do that as a minor. Um, and we have talked about looking at what we can do. The problem is I'm not sure how well we would prepare somebody for the field of exercise science if it was just a minor. So a minor is just six courses. So you would for sure have to have anatomy and physiology one and two. So that takes up two courses. Um, and then we'd only be able to give you four more courses. And we could probably do something like that, but we haven't gotten to that yet. That is on our agenda. Uh, if we think that we can put together a minor in exercise science that um, really is beneficial for students, then we would we would do that. It's just tough because you have to think about what courses you are you not going to teach. Good question, though. Um, another one. If they're asking if this email will be emailed, if this PowerPoint will be emailed to the attendees. If you email, what us, I will we'll be happy to do is I think I have everybody's email. Um, I can put this in a PDF and send it out to everybody. I'll do that. Um, what is Adventure Leadership Cog? There's a one question on that. Yeah, so um, it, it's a, a program that it was put together to help people to use adventure type activities like rock climbing and, and those types of uh, uh, activities uh, as a way to build leadership within teams. So um, I've done some activities with the sports teams where we take them through um, different physical challenges, including rock climbing, um, and we help them to bond together. Um, and um, the program is really designed to help you become a leader in what it's like to be able to lead. Um, so that's primarily what it's about. And you can get on our website and read through it a little bit more. And one is the, to become a physician assistant, will I need chemistry or organic chemistry? That's Yeah, I think I... Uh, great question. You will definitely need Chem 1 and Chem 2. So um, we require you to take Chem 1. What you'll have to do is take Chem 2 as one of your free electives. So you have, everybody has six free electives, means you can take whatever you want. If you're thinking of PT, OT, physician assistant, med school, any of that, you're going to have to load up those free electives with those types of courses. So you will take Chem 1 and 2, and then after that, each school is different. So some schools will re require uh, organic Chem 1 and 2, some schools won't. So we have a, um, a uh, health professions program here. You will have an, an advisor in addition to Mrs. Dowd, that will make sure that you take all the correct prerequisites. 
So um, if you email me that question personally, I'll give you a little bit more information on that because I have to look at each school to see what each school will provide. But shoot me an email and I'll get right back to you uh, later today. You're probably going to have to take chem. I know you're going to have to take chem one and two and probably organic one and two as well. And the last one, does physical therapy fall in the same spectrum as osteopathic medicine? I can take that. So uh, physical therapy and both physical therapy and osteopathic medicine are graduate level education. And, but the difference, main difference is osteopathic medicine. When you graduate from this program, you're considered as a medical doctor who can prescribe medicine versus physical therapy is also a graduate program, but you won't be able to prescribe medicine. And mainly you're going to be dealing with musculoskeletal injuries and, and, you know, not necessarily, uh, different areas of the medicine so one is medical doctor the other is not that's the main difference pretty much yeah and, and in, in physical therapy um towards the end of your years in physical therapy you'll start to choose the area you want to be in so not everything is orthopedic in physical therapy there's neuromuscular and a lot of other areas too um so you 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 kind of start towards the end of that degree to decide which which direction do I want to go? I think most people think of physical therapists and orthopedic injuries. I think they think of that, but there's a lot of other things too. There, there's some physical therapists that go into cardiac rehab and pulmonary rehab where it's not orthopedic at all. Great questions, great questions. Okay, um, so now I'm going to turn the show over to Dr. Joiger, who's going to talk a little bit about research. All right, so since 2014, Rowan uh, University was declared as the research institute of New Jersey after Rutgers, so that's the second biggest research institute. And since then, we started hiring people like me who has a research agenda, and we are trying to grow and, and implement research as a big part of our education. And I think we were very successful in the last couple of years. So I'm going to talk to you about the each faculty that we have and briefly what they do so you can get the understanding of uh, what type of research activity is going on. So Dr. Denkel uh, started working at, in our department last year and his uh, research interest is uh, very interesting these days. It's a very hot topic. So they apply blood flow restriction, in other words, tourniquet, type of a tourniquet to the muscle. And when muscle works at a slow, low level of forces, like 20% of or 30% of their capacity, you can see pretty much the same benefit as if it's working at a 90% without the uh, occlusion. So by limiting the blood flow to the muscle, you get a very high response from the muscle. And he's a very well published uh, researcher, and he has been actively recruiting uh, research, uh, undergraduate researchers. So, by the way, I have to explain you this program. Uh, you are going to be doing a s internship for nine credits as of now, and we select the best students and it's a mutual agreement between student and the faculty so that they can do half and half. They can do one third and two third in the research program and the other part that can they can go collect their hours in the clinics and so what and so, some some other choices. But uh, we select our students in a mutual agreement. Usually we approach them in junior year or sophomore year and we communicate among the faculty that saying, you know, doc, Dr. Denkel, here's, my, here's a student that I have and I know she's interested in blood flow with occlusive exercise, whatnot. So we, we can communicate among the faculty and recruit uh, our talented students as an undergraduate researcher. And depending on our awards and grants, there may be some funding available, although small, but some funding may be available for undergraduate researchers as well. So this is something that shines on the CVs. As, as you can imagine, a lot of students want to go to PTOT and physical physician assistants and schools, and they, there's a huge competition and everybody has a high GPA. Everybody takes the same courses. Everybody has the same clinical hours. But what shines on the CVs are these kind of extracurricular activities and research is probably the most important one. So, uh, as of now, we probably, I don't have the exact number, but we might, we have 25 students, 20 to 25 undergraduate research assistants uh, working for us for the whole faculty. 
and this number is ever growing. We are hiring more and more faculties and they're, they're needing more and more students. So there's a great program going on right now for research. So the next, uh, you can move to me, I'm the next. So what I do is I, you see the pictures of, of my lab and I create custom devices from scrap as metals and wood boxes and stuff. And I test these, uh, I use these custom design objects to test different muscles. And my target population is, is people with neurological diseases. Uh, I am right now working with people with schizophrenia and we are using isometric testing of the muscle to evaluate their uh, motor functioning. And also I am interested in effects of high speed cycling on uh, people with Parkinson's disease and people with schizophrenia. Um, you can move on to the yeah. next one. I just got one question here. Uh, it said, what specialties are included in physician assistant in exercise science? So not quite exactly sure what you're asking. Um, so as a physician assistant, you, you are um, obviously working in a medical facility, and there are physician assistants that do some things in orthopedics, uh, which would integrate some of the things that are in exercise science. Um, but again, if you email me specifically some details about that question, maybe I can give you a better answer than that. Um, so Dr. Kim is going to be our newest recruit and she's going to start uh, working in our department in fall 2020 and uh, she's uh, coming from umass and she, her research interest is including a, a yoga training for the bone and cardiovascular health in aging population especially women and we are very excited to have her because we have expertise in va various areas of the human body as well as exercise science so she's going to add depth to our knowledge in bone quality, bone health. We already have cardiovascular, we already have meta metabolic, we, have, we already have muscle, but now we will have the expertise in bone, which means there will be new instruments and uh, tools to measure the bone quality in, in the department. We are very excited to have her. So uh, this is Dr. Klein, and Dr. Klein also joined us uh, in last two years. So he's a very new faculty as well. And his uh, interests research, he's a nutritionist, so he's more interested in the nutrition aspect. And the most recent study he was conducting was uh, omega-3 supplements and how it affects neuromuscular functioning. And also he's uh, looking at the blood markers to evaluate the nutritional nutrition uh, qualities and vitamins and how, how, how it helps metabolism as well as uh, neuromuscular functioning. And the Dr. Pletcher is athletic trainer. So he, she's a professor in athletic training major. And together with her, we are uh, working on students with concussions. So we are using a small device to detect uh, con the effects of concussion that cannot be detected by current strategies. And uh, she's also interested in upper extremity uh, injuries in softball pitching mainly. And it, the second, the bottom picture on the left to the second, second on the left is showing you the uh, kinematic data of someone who is throwing a uh, batting actually. So we put markers on the human body, record them with the cameras and create that stick figure which, on which we can study the biomechanical model. And she's an expert in biomechanics and especially upper extremity. And uh, she, as you can see in all these pictures, we have the student uh, researchers completing the research projects together with the fact their faculties. Next one. So uh, we are keep adding to our research uh, facilities, and we have mainly a couple labs that I'm going to talk about. The first one is the Exercise Physiology Research Lab. So this is not only a research lab, but also it's a teaching lab. We use this lab. Uh, in many different courses, but mainly in excess physiology, excess prescription kinesiology. So this lab is equipped with a metabolic cart, which is a 
gold standard uh, tool to measure someone's cardiovascular health is the one on the left when Dr. Byron is conducting this experiment. You see there's a mask on the face of the person. And by analyzing the gases, the carbon dioxide and oxygen, we can come up with the, what type of macronutrient the person is burning. Is it carbohydrate or fat? What, how, what's their cardiovascular fitness level? And we also have very uh, state-of-the-art, top-of-the-notch uh, uh, body fat measuring device on the right-hand side. And this lab is always open for the students uh, so they can come in and practice their skills. We have teaching assistants, uh, learning assistants in the lab that waits for the students to come, up, come in there and ask their questions. So you will be able to use the equipment and along with the, the, these assistants, we'll be able to help you with your questions if you have any in four hours of a week, I guess, at least four hours of a week, you'll be able to do that. And this is adjacent to the ex exercise physiology lab. So the, the uh, student facing towards you is where the exercise physiology lab is. But in this lab, we have, again, state of the art, 10 video cameras that are not typical, that are recording at uh, 5,000, 10,000 frames per second. And they are not recording real videos, but they're recording uh, three dimensional positions of the markers. So these are the cameras that are used in video gaming and as well as fancy physical therapy clinics use them a lot. Uh, we have force plates underneath the carpet that records your uh, forces that you, you generate against the ground. We have a portable uh, vertical jump force plate that you can analyze your vertical jump and we use all these instruments in teaching. And on the right hand side, uh, my, I have my motor control lab that I was just talking about. Here's my students. We are testing uh, this guy's knee extension and knee flexion strength. And we were using the, the strength to estimate uh, his likelihood of getting an ACL injury because we know that imbalance between quadriceps and hamstring is a, a precursor for your ACL injuries. And these are ever growing lab, like we keep adding instruments and each instrument is commonly used in relevant courses. And we have an hydrostating weighing lab and which has a tank that is 400 gallons and we fill this with water and in excess physiology lab, one in one of these labs, you know, would sunk into the water and we, by using their weight under the water and by using their weight outside of the water, we can make a gold standard estimate of body fat. And this is a great lab that we can teach Archimedes principle, some physics, along with some application on the gold standard on how to measure your body fat. And we have a program called Get Fed, which is a great program and uh, that uh, it includes people with learning disabilities and autism and certain uh, uh, developmental problems. And all these people are coming into the lab and all these people are matched with a student and students are uh, prescribing them exercise. And it's a great one of the best ways to improve your CV, one of the best for ways to improve your skills, because you're prescribing exercise to someone in need, and it is almost one-on-one, -on -one. you collect data, and it's a great, such a great program that has been successfully running for so long, and Dr. Spencer needs the credit for that program. So we have a great participation rate among our students, and I always tell my students that they have to be involved with Get Fit. This is the name of the program. And in that, that program runs in a small gym that we use for teaching purposes. So it's pretty much fully equipped gym and we use that in application courses. In the middle, you see athletic training lab, which is pretty much designated for athletic training students. So we don't go in there too much. They, these students uh, do their hands-on practices in athletic training lab. And we recently made a phlebo phlebotomy lab that we can draw blood, which is a very important skill and to study the blood markers of exercise or nutrition, if, uh, the effects of nutrition. And we also have a nutrition behavior lab that are two adjacent labs that you can observe through glass. And again, it's not 
uh, my strongest gun, but uh, this is going to be heavily used hopefully soon. Okay, so that kind of takes us through the presentation. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things to help you be successful. Um, so I, I wrote these up and there's probably other ones I could give you as well, but these are some of the things I think at the top of my head. First of all, remember why you're here. College can be a blast and a lot of fun and you should enjoy all the great things there are in college, but remember what you're doing here. You're here to develop the knowledge, the skills, the experiences, and the disposition so you can get a career uh, in the field that you want to get into, whether that's going to graduate school or whether it's going right into the career field. And I think the approach that you take to your classes is really important. Um, for those of you that are in high school now, uh, or those of you maybe that trans are transferring in, sometimes we get in the habit of just thinking that class is about taking a, a, a test or writing a paper and, and focusing on getting a certain grade. That's not what you're here for. You're here to, to learn the information and the test is kind of secondary. secondary. Um, it's not about, can I pass a test? It's about, do I have the knowledge, the skills and the disposition to work with somebody who has just had a heart attack, to help somebody to lose weight, to help somebody get faster and stronger. So just make sure your approach is that you want to be in class. It's not, I have to go to class. It's, I want to go to class because I want to learn. So that's one thing you want to try to develop. And that's different sometimes than high school is. Uh, ask for help. Uh, Dr. Yurger and I could tell you over and over, students waiting and waiting and waiting and their grades aren't where they want them to be. And at the end of the semester, they come to us and say, what can I do? Well, you can't do that. You may have been able to get away with that in high school, but you can't do it here. So the moment you're struggling with something, please make sure you ask for help, whether it's your teacher, whether it's Mrs. Dowd, your advisor, or I'm the chair of the department and I'm the program coordinator. Definitely come to me right away whenever you're having difficulty with anything. And we're, we're here to help you. Uh, professors are, in a way, I feel like professors work for you. Uh, our job is to help you to develop the knowledge, skills, and experiences so you can get a career. So never feel like you're bothering a professor to ask for help. Stop in, say hi. If you're struggling with something, get help right away. The third thing, we all do this. Uh, you can't procrastinate. If you think you're going to pass tests by studying the night before, staying up late, it's not going to happen in this degree. Things are way too hard. So you got to create a weekly plan. I literally tell my students, Create a plan Sunday through Saturday. And when are you going to be in class? When do you work? When do you travel? When are you going to work out? When are you going to eat? And when are you going to study? You should know which days and what times are you going to study? Because if you don't have a plan for studying, what happens is you say, well, I got the weekend. I'll study on the weekend. Then something comes up over the weekend. And then the next thing you know, it's Sunday night and you're cramming. So don't procrastinate. Meet the faculty and create relationships. The faculty that you um, that you have here all have worked in the field and we know people in the field uh, to help you to get jobs and to help you get experiences. So never feel uncomfortable going up and just setting up a time to come in and meet your professors. Uh, get involved and on campus. Some of you probably have to work and we totally understand that, but there's a lot of opportunities to get involved. When graduate schools, PT, OT, physician assistant, so on, or when employers are looking at your resume, they're first going to look to see, do you have a degree? And everybody in the application pool is going to have a degree. The next thing they're going to want to see is, what did you do while you were in college? And if you can say, I was a part of the Exercises Medicine Club, I did research with Dr. Uyghur, I did five different things, then that's the type of person that gets accepted into PT school or gets the job. If you're simply saying, well, I got my degree, but I don't have any experience now, it's not to say that you can't get into those schools or you can't get a job. Of course you can, but you're going to be down towards the lower end. And we, we're we here to make you as successful as we possibly can be. And we will challenge you and we will push you. And um, when you get to, to Rowan and you ask about me, they will tell you um, that he's going to challenge it. I'm kind of an upfront person. Tell it like it is. If I don't think you're giving me your best effort, I'm going to I'm going to tell you not to get on your case, but to help you to be the best that you can be. And then lastly, I'll say, be proactive. You can either in life, let life happen to you, 
and you get what you get, or you can go create your life. So be proactive, have a purpose. Every class you take, think about, I'm trying to learn this information so I can get that career and make sure you create a plan for yourself. We'll give you some more tips when you get to school, but those are some things to think about over the summer while you're getting ready to, to join us at Rowan. So that takes us through our presentation. Um, a couple people had some great questions. So I wanna get back to everybody. I'm just gonna email everybody uh, the question about the chemistry for physician assistant, some of the specialties in physician assistant. I'm gonna email out this PowerPoint. And I think those were the majority of questions that people had. Let's just give you just one more minute. If anybody has any other questions to pop, we can answer them and then uh, we can call it a day. So any other questions that anyone has? Um, while you're thinking there, um, you've got our email addresses. Um, I check my email every single day, including Saturday and Sunday. So if you if you leave here and you say, oh, I should have asked something, just shoot me an email and I will be happy to get back to you. Uh, for those of you that are transferring in, we, first of all, obviously we welcome you. Um, definitely make sure you get with Mrs. Dowd right away uh, because since you're transferring in, it's a little bit tight. Help you to schedule your classes. Make sure you schedule your classes through her. The way Rowan has it set up and most schools have it set up is that you can get online and, and schedule your own classes. But if you take the wrong classes because you didn't speak with Mrs. Dowd, it can put you behind. So with every semester, you're going to want to meet with Mrs. Dowd and say, what classes do you want me to take for the next semester so that you're you're staying on track? Okay, uh, Dr. Yuger, did you see any more questions coming in? I didn't see uh, no, that's it. Okay. Well, we're very excited to have you at Rowan, and I, I really hope that each of you will stop in the first day. We're going to see what happens uh, in the fall with, with all of the uh, coronavirus stuff going on, but we do plan on um, being up and, and running, whether it's remotely or certainly face-to-face. -face. I do believe Rowan is trying as, as hard as they can to do face-to-face -face, um, with, some, with some options for uh, remote learning. Uh, but I'm excited to meet everybody, and we welcome you. All right, you all take it easy. Bye bye. Right, take care. Can't wait to meet you. You can stop recording, I can. Yeah, I'm trying to. There we go.